Hey guys, welcome back here to my channel and today to part three of my hyper coaster build coaster B as in the insect and uh, yeah, I'm covering a lot of stuff today. I'm going to go through a lot of different changes and different little small builds throughout the entire map. I also do quite a few things off camera, for example, some foliage and also all the custom supports on the coaster and also putting walls around the edge of the map. Things that I think are quite boring to watch. So I've done all that off camera and I'm just going to show you lots of things today um, throughout this video. So uh, if you're new here, don't forget to click that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up for this video if you're enjoying it so far and if you like it at the end of the video as well. And also you can join me on Patreon to support me as a creator here on YouTube uh, for just three euros a month. And there I post screenshots and now you get early access to my um, videos here on YouTube as well. You can see what I'm up to, what I'm building and other little things as well. So yeah, basically I'm going ahead here and adding in this honeycomb pattern on the floor at the exit of the ride and also around the very um, front of the entrance to the ride as well, um, just to kind of tie it all together, give it a motif, if you will. Um, so at the moment they're white and I'm coloring them in different kind of shades of yellow honey, if you will. Um, but I feel like the white was just so kind of didn't look very good so i do actually change it to gray later on um i also wanted to do like honeycombs uh like as like a near miss element at the bottom of the drop as like a neon kind of tunnel kind of thing um very reminiscent of um i think it might be like one of the superman hyper coasters um at six flags new england maybe i'm not sure um, but it has something similar um, i wanted to do that obviously the first version you just saw me do there was way too small so i actually ended up doing it again but in a bigger size i just skipped the process because it was the same thing but yeah i went ahead and did that i'm also finishing up the wall here which goes around the path area um, which is basically just border pieces from shy guys one um, the fence pieces from shy guys four and then some shapes um, which i've taken from the vanilla pieces and just kind of resized and stacked them up there um, to give them a nice kind of pillar look and then I'm adding in some of these wooden gates here for access to the maintenance guys technicians etc people who would work in the park and need to access these kind of areas and um, yeah just adding in some more little details here I'm using the um, burial burial mound I think that's what it's called um, here because this is actually all path covers the green is path covers it's not actually grass so I can't recolor it so I'm using the um, this piece the the mound and I'm just kind of I've recolored it and I'm using it as like texture um, to put along the edge of pathways or where cars might go here's a little maintenance van which uh, as you might know I work currently in a theme park for the summer and it's really cool every day to go in the backstage areas um, when walking around the park and actually see all the things that, are, that what the guests don't see and there's vans and cars parked everywhere uh, at all the access points ready for a mechanic or a technician to jump into and go to a ride as quick as they can if there's a problem um, so i've added in a little car there at the back there just at the bottom of the lift hill so now moving on again uh, on to the transfer track area uh, where the train would be stored i wanted to do a canopy so i again i'm using that motif of a honeycomb and i'm just doing one honeycomb and i've extended it into a long building this actually really reminds me of the uh, station on millennium force um, but yeah i'm going in and basically using a similar build style to what i've already done and basically just making this um, little storage area and this is also hidden a little bit with some foliage and trees uh, on the back side there so it's not too visible from the get for the guests and it's wedged right in between the station and the brake run of the coaster um, so i had to kind of cover it up a little bit i didn't want just want to have just bare track out there um, also i think it's really good on a transfer track if there is a like a, a canopy above it to kind of protect the trains that are in there which is funny because um, I've actually seen some coasters that have transfer areas that don't have any cover at all. And the one that comes to mind, I don't know if it's changed now or not, but Shambhala in Port Aventura, Spain, uh, the transfer track area um, is just open. It's just, there's nothing protecting the trains there. I mean, I don't, I guess they don't get as much bad weather over in Spain. I don't know, but it does rain there, of course. But uh, yeah, I don't know what they do to protect the trains, but hey, that's none of my business really I'm uh, just just thinking about it but yeah so I wanted to cover up my storage area there and I'm also going to add some of the coaster tech uh, the coaster B text 
on the side of that um, roof as well, just to kind of tie that in with the entrance and with the rest of the ride. Like I said, this theme is basically a B, um, and uh, I didn't want to go like like a friendly and furry B theme, or I didn't want to do like an evil B. I just wanted to do something kind of abstract, a little bit arty. Um, and that's why I've got kind of neon lights and these kind of white skeletal bead structures and that kind of thing. Uh, as you saw that as the station, or if you watched the last episode, you would have seen me build the station. Um, very reminiscent of Fury 325 and that kind of whole um, aesthetic. That's kind of what I was going for. That's what I was inspired by, as I've mentioned as well before. So um, I don't know if it's the same for other players that are also doing this challenge right now for this month the back area of this map is a struggle um it's quite a long map it's 10 squares wide and it's 100 squares long so like two thirds of my map were pretty done you know i knew what was going on and then i decided to like divide up the map with some water which always makes it a little bit easier along the way but then i got this little island here at the back and it's been quite difficult. I didn't really know what to do there, theme-wise. It's not really a part of the part where guests can go to. I also have the depot there. I do not know why I put the depot there. Um, I don't know what went through my head when I was building this map or designing it. It's such an awkward position for the depot. I, it's just, yeah. So, any way that you may have covered up this month, I'm going to be um, impressed by because it was a tricky one. Uh, you know, it's, it's a nice challenge anyway. But uh, I'm actually going to use... I've said this before, I'm going to use the depot, um, I've put like a little section of monorail track and I'm going to have it as a, like, that's the part of a maintenance area for the monorail where the monorail track actually splits off and then maybe the trains can go into this area and have maintenance done and that whole kind of back corner there is going to be a backstage area of the park, um, which is a bit of a cop out, it is the easy way to go when covering the depot. Um, but sometimes it looks really good in a park, especially if you're doing something like I'm doing now, where I am actually taking a section of the park, uh, the, my section of the park is maybe a chunk taking out of a real theme park. I'm not doing like a fantasy map where it's another world. It is, I wanted to go for something realistic, something that, um, could be taken from a real theme park. And so I think sometimes having like a real, a realistic looking backstage area, uh, in the map can really make it look a bit more realistic. So that's what I'm going to go for. Um, yeah, I think a tunnel here was kind of the best option I could go for. Again, not super interesting or anything, and also really simple, Not nothing like complicated here build-wise. Um, really simple. But it looks good, it looks effective. I'm going to add neon lights again around the honeycomb, um, like I did on the entrance, just to tie that in together as well. And at night time, this is going to look really, really awesome. Lots of neon um, colours kind of here and there throughout the entire map. So as you can see here, there are custom supports on the rest of the track, which I did say um, I did them off camera because it's really boring to watch, but they are very just kind of basic supports. Um, I tried to kind of just do what DNM would normally do with their supports. Um, added flanges on them, did footers, etc. cetera. Um, I like to do bolts normally on the footers as well, but I'm just not really sure I have the time to do like all the bolts on the footers. And also I don't know if it's, that important right now because it's a really cool detail to add um, which I've done before it takes a really long time I just don't know if I have the time right now and I don't know if it's really worth me doing it at this point because it looks good anyway um, but it would be cool if there would be like a mod piece that's a ring with some bolts on it that would be cool like a resizable one um, so now I'm just going to add in some splashes of texture here onto the green kind of grass areas where there aren't any path covers and I've also added in some foliage as you can see some different dark kind of dark green trees um, I've used like three types of trees um, this is a common thing that we've people have said before in other videos in theme park games but uh, when you're building a park it's always good to stick to three or four trees and not any more um, and kind of just rotate around those trees and maybe just change the shade of them slightly um, because sometimes it can look a bit weird when you have too many different types of tree anyway moving on to the um, the Zamperla Discovery ride here, or a, a Frisbee, whatever you want to call it, a gyro swing. Um, I want to tie this in as well to fit with the B theme, and so I thought calling it Stinger would be cool. Um, and then having like a Stinger as a part of like the logo here, or like the entrance kind of marquee area. Um, so I thought that'd be really cool and have the ride swing over the top of it. I love a good gyro swing ride. Um, I've been on some 
really good ones. I've also been on some not so great ones. Um, there's two rides that I really love in a theme park and one is a gyro swing and one is a drop tower. And if a park has both of those things, I'm generally really happy. Um, I can think of a really good example. Uh, it's not one of my favorite parks in the world is Drayton Manor. It's a good park. It's like a one-time visit park for me, but that park has a really good drop tower and a really good gyro swing. So it kind of is worth it, you know, even if it hasn't got the best coaster selection, um, you know, you're going to get a good ride on Apocalypse, the drop tower, and I could do that over and over. And the gyro swing, Maelstrom is an Intamin gyro swing, and uh, gyro swing even. <laughs> Uh, and uh, it's a really good one. I really like it. So yeah, those two kind of rides are always really important for me in a park um, More so drop towers like I just I absolutely love a drop tower especially If it's like a proper good one like an Intamin gyro drop That's forceful, you know, I just absolutely love it. Some of my favorites are um, Scream at Hyde Park. I think that one's fantastic uh, High Fall at Movie Park also really 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 good drop tower it's not as high as the others, but it's it's so forceful. Um, and Apocalypse, of course, that's another good one. Huracan Condor at um, Port Aventura is a really good one as well. Um, one that was a little bit underwhelming was um, Atmosphere in Leesburg, Sweden. That wasn't a great drop tower. It was really good fun, and it had some really great views. It just wasn't that forceful. And also... Um, the two big ones, uh, Zumanjaro, Drop of Doom, and Lex Luthor, both incredibly high, but lacked any type of force. I don't know what it was about them. I don't know. I love a drop tower, but those ones didn't do it for me. Sometimes the smaller ones pack more of a punch. I also really love the um, the Fabry ones, uh, like the one at Thought Park, Detonator. They're small, but they also pack a punch. There's one of those also at Schlaghagen in Holland. I'm a bit of a drop drop tower enthusiast, so um, and, <laughs> I've been on a lot of them and I, I really enjoy them. Anyway, I uh, back to the game. I'd actually just dressed up the gyro swing, as you saw, gave it a little bit of a theme, added some crates. I wanted to also kind of disguise the footers as crates as well. And I've done the walls around the edge there. I'm going to use Freedom 2K to do the walls around the bottom, but I'll do that off camera. Um, I'm just adding in some more lights here. But yeah, that's pretty much... All of the little updates on the map for this episode i'm going to do i'm going to try and do one more episode i want to do one more episode before the actual challenge finishes for this month i'm going to leave you with a couple of screenshots though at the end of this just to kind of show you what i've done and give you a sneak peek as well at night time um with like the area that i just did near the depot area but i need to build the depot bit and just do a few more little details but thank you for watching i really do appreciate you giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel and i'll see you all next time here for another episode Bye.